Hey, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, the last time I, I did a video on restrictions and um, uh, the current situation I'm going to use, uh, I, I think I think it's difficult for me to use the actual phrase in the first minute of the video, so I'm not going to. Um, but uh, the last time I spoke about this, uh, I was in my own gym, and unfortunately my gym is no more. Um, a couple of weeks after I made that video, it might not even have been a couple of weeks, I had to take the decision to close um, permanently. Now, that's a story for another day. It's, it's one I'm not going to get tied up on here um, because there's an awful lot to it. It's not a case of because COVID happened, we had to close. Uh, there's definitely a factor in there, but it wasn't the clinching factor, put it that way. Um, so you can stay tuned if you want to want to hear more about that because there's a, a few legalities I think at the moment for me not to be able to talk about it and uh, yeah I, I just want to give it a bit of breathing space anyway but I will put out at some point the full picture um, because it is important I think that people hear this um, for the sake of others. So we'll get to that in the future. But what I want to be able to talk about today is mask wearing. Masks. Um, yeah, and, and we are going to, I think we're long enough in now that I can see the word COVID. Um, mask wearing in, in conjunction with that. Um, now I wanted to talk about this before, but there were bigger fish to fry. And uh, that there still are. There's a lot of things that I do want to talk about. But as we're at a point of sort of feeling like things are easing a little bit, I think people are a little bit more relaxed about certain things, um, just because they feel like they are being allowed to do X, Y, and Z. Um, I still think there are a lot of issues, um, especially when it comes to the hospitality sector, of which I, I've no. I've said that before. Uh, I've no skin in the game when it comes to that whatsoever. But I, I still think they're being harshly treated and um, yeah, uh, that's something I'll talk about in the future. But this is this is one subject I, I really wanted to kind of like hammer down on a little bit. As I've said before though, what, what I want to make clear is these videos are here as a point of discussion. It's to try and get away from the binary viewpoints. The idea when it comes to this, for example, that mask wearing should not be happening or that mask wearing should absolutely be happening. Of course it should, because we need to protect lives. These are two ends of the spectrum, and maybe there's some wiggle room at either end, and there's something in the middle that we should actually be getting a bit more close to if we could open our minds a little bit more and, and sort of relax our viewpoint. Now, if anybody's been severely affected by um, this pandemic, they've lost someone to it or they've they've actually had it and it, it, it was like a severe case, then you can understand why the viewpoint would want to be the belts and braces view and, and the logical view, the, the one that intuitively feels right. If you've not been affected by it and you your life is suffering from the consequences of COVID, the, the the lockdowns affecting your business, which you could say that mine was, but it, again, it, that, that's not the reason we closed, not fully anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it's if you're on that end of it, if your livelihood is affected, your your ability to to feed your family, you you know basically your income is is really been hit by this. Or just your kind of way of life, you know, uh, maybe there's someone in your family, you know, you've got children or something that that don't do well from being at home and being away from other kids and that kind of thing for whatever reason. Um, then being on the other end of the spectrum is completely understandable. But I think what we do have to get to is, is to the understanding that we all live in a bubble. We all live in, in our own little worlds. And just because we know 20 people who agree with us doesn't mean to say that the the millions of people um, in this country, just this country alone, also agree with us. We may just be in a little bubble of 20 people that happen to have one viewpoint and everyone else may have another viewpoint. Ultimately, what it really comes down to is, you know, what does the science say? 
Now, unfortunately, I think where we're at with this is we're, we're often looking at what the science says is what the politicians say because they are being advised by scientists but and they're saying what the science says. And whilst science can be very useful as a tool, it's not always black and white again. There are certain elements of it that are black and white. If something is proven beyond any doubt, it's scientific fact, then you can't argue with it. Um, but that's not necessarily been the case here. What we're hearing an awful lot of is what the evidence is pointing to. Or we don't have enough evidence on that yet. So then you have to sort of rely a little bit more on experience and experience from experts. And what do they say? So that th these are all things that I want to touch on here. But to try and just get through it, because we're only talking about maths, so I don't want to make this a crazy long video. But I do, I do want to get into it a little bit in, in detail. So um, the situation from, from the point of view that a lot of people will come up and, and maybe is probably the most understandable one is are masks effective? And there have been studies that have shown that they're really not effective. Um, certainly when the studies are looking at are they effective at protecting you, the wearer, um, the, the evidence seems to show that no, they're not effective at all in that instance. Um, in some cases, it may actually be slightly worse if you are wearing a mask, but the source, we'll say, um, the other person or people or the environment, um, is, is not being shielded through a mask then you're, you might actually be worse off wearing one. That's, that seems to be what I'm seeing, but mainly because the particles and things can cling to the fabric. And now, you know, like, whereas they, they may have been there before and you may have inhaled them, now they're kind of there. Your chances of inhaling are, are very high um, because you're just going to keep breathing on this damp cloth now, for want of a better term. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, so as the wearer, you're not really protecting yourself, but there is some evidence to show that you're protecting the other person when you're in a situation where, where the, there's two of you, let's say. If you have it, maybe you don't have symptoms, but you have the virus within you, then wearing this mask will help protect others around you. So that seems to be what the science tells us. Therefore, it's understandable again, knowing that, that the argument would be, well, we should all wear one because we don't know who's got it. And we don't know, you know, like, um, well, just to be on the safe side, we should definitely all wear one. Really, really that's what it, what it comes down to. And we should all wear one whenever we're in a situation where we could pass it on to someone else. Then you get to the point of where do you draw the line with that? Because now do we all need to wear them in our houses? Because we could pass them on to someone else we live with, that kind of thing. Um, that would be crazy. So at what point does the crazy line stop? Uh, and, and so that's that's kind of something I, I think to, to have to think about here. Um, it might not be where you think it should stop. Ultimately, we live in a democracy. So... Um, we voted for a, a government to dictate on our behalf. They, they were supposed to be, you, you vote for whoever you think is going to best represent you, whoever gets the most votes, they are the most representative of the public in general, and therefore, because we, we, we all agree to live in this democracy, then we should agree to go along with whatever they're saying. The thing is that at the last election, this wasn't a policy decision that, that was being um, put out there. So we, we weren't voting on, I don't think anybody was thinking, if there's a pandemic, who would be the best to serve us? So it doesn't really follow from that. You know, we've all got, again, our different biases. So for, for the UK election, an awful lot of it was down to Brexit. And a, a lot of people were clearly just wanting to get it over and done with. And that's why they voted the way that they did. Um, in Scotland, Clearly, there is a, a, a situation where there's a, a, a big surge for people looking at independence, whether they want it or not, um, and people will vote accordingly um, because they're trying to vote pro-independence or anti-independence. 
and a lot of the other stuff goes out the window <laughs> after that. Um, it's it's more like who, if you vote SNP, then you're voting essentially to say that you want independence. Not necessarily always the case, but it's a, it's a big factor in who you're voting for. So what I'm really saying here is that, that we do agree to abide by the rules that are thrust upon us because we voted for the parliament that is basically creating those rules, but at the same time, nobody really voted for this. So, you know, that argument's a little bit woolly, but it's, it's, it's one worth considering. Um, but uh, the other side of it is then, once we get to the point that masks can be effective for protecting the other person from the wearer, then where do you wear them? When do you wear them? That kind of thing. And the, the argument here that's been given against the wearing of them has quite often been the fact that uh, when people have got them on, they tend to think, well, that's it. I'm protecting people now. So now I don't have to keep my distance and I can get very close to, to other people. And I know for a fact, from, from, from my experience, that is what happened. Um, so the the... During the first wave of, of all of this, when you could still go to a supermarket, but there was no requirement to wear a mask, but they included the social distancing and the hand sanitizing and all that, the, the, the level of enforcement of that was incredible. Um, I, I think some supermarkets in particular did an incredible job when it came to uh, how they policed that, how they managed it and everything else. It meant a lot of standing outside waiting um, before you could get in. But once you were in, the job was done very, very well, although it did feel very apocalyptic. It felt very strange. I know the first time I went into a supermarket under those conditions, I, I, I felt actually quite nervous um, about the whole thing. And it wasn't something that was really causing me huge concern um, as far as, you know, w will I catch this thing? Um, but uh, it, yeah, that just being in that experience, it was it was quite freaky. So that was, that was in the beginning. But once the masks came in, a lot of the policing dropped off. So that's maybe on the supermarkets. But also people in general just stopped um, giving too much, they, they maybe paid it a bit of lip service, especially when you're first walking through the door and there's the security guards around and things like that. But when you're actually walking up and down aisles, people just don't really care. Some do, but it doesn't matter if some do and others don't. The ones that don't are then making it very difficult for everyone else. And then it becomes borderline impossible to, to try and keep 100% to, to what the, the distancing rules were. So, um, yeah, but it is, it is one of these things that that I'm hoping that that's one thing that we do have going forward is the idea that some level of distancing, because it does feel weird, it feels weird to me. So I'm going to guess it feels weird to a lot of people still, the idea of people being close. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to leave that for another video. But... Um, but yeah, it's something that definitely happens. And I have seen some, um, I'm not sure if it's studies, but that may be giving them a too, too big a, um, a, a title. Um, but I have seen things put out there that basically say that this is what happens and that it may be safer not to wear a mask in that situation. And I think if you've got to choose between the two of them, you choose the distancing and the sanitizing over the mask wearing. That's what you should do if you're going to pick one. And the argument, therefore, is is you know from from the the extreme side of the the argument. Well, people should just. Well, you can say that all you like, but people aren't, and so what are you going to do about it? It's it's you know like you can't police everyone all the time. So if that's how people habitually act, it's better to have it the other way, I feel. So that, that's kind of um, the thought process there. However, uh, when you look at it from some of the scientific point of views that are out there that are not being so well publicised, and I'm going to go back here again to mention Nutwokowski, um, because 
he's a name I can remember. <laughs> but uh, th there are others, but he's he's the name that just sticks in my head. I've read so much of his stuff now um, and, and consumed so much of his content. And, you know, some of it goes right over my head because it's, it's too technical and I don't know what he's talking about. Um, but, uh, and, and some of it, I think, hmm, okay, I, I, I'd want to know more on that or I'd like to go into that a little bit deeper. But a lot of it just does make sense. And and he's the one that's got the, the I think it's 35 years or something of experience in epidemiology. Um, and the other thing with him and some of the others of his ilk is that what they were saying last year, at the beginning of all this, a lot of what they're saying ended up being true, yet they're not being listened to. Now, why that is, we can go into again another time. But one of the things that they'll bring up, uh, and the people on that side of the the um, the argument, for want of a better term, again, I keep saying that, but uh, but yes, for for the other side of the argument, is that um, there is a time and a place. So obviously, their argument argument. Uh, well, maybe not obviously if you haven't looked at it, but a lot of their argument is based on the idea that, that we should have been um, doing a little bit more on the way of uh, the herd immunity approach. Now, I know that gets people's back up um, because it's almost like, oh, we'll just let it run riot then and people will die. And clearly people have died, but it would be more. Um, and, and we should just let that happen, should we? Just so that we can get herd immunity. That's not what he's saying. It's not what I'm saying. It's not. It's not what anyone in that side of the equation is saying. Really, there are some people who probably do say that and probably are thinking that it's just you know, the it's God's will or it's um uh you know natural selection or something like that. Um, survival of the fittest. I I don't know. Some people are probably pushing that that end of it, but that's not what I'm saying here. What what where their argument comes from, and this is a bit that does kind of resonate with me, is that the idea here was always we knew who was vulnerable from the first outbreak in Wuhan, um, but then when that sort of came through Italy as well, and, and especially in areas where it was an older demographic, there was a realisation that this was affecting the older population much more severely than the younger population. Where it affects younger people is people with comorbidities and so that their underlying conditions are really what's causing the problems most of the time. Now again, I'll go into this in another video at some point because this is this is one that really kind of irks me is that the, the counter argument is, but I know someone or there was that person in the news. The reason these things come up is because they're newsworthy. People die of freak things, freak circumstances all the time. Does it make it any any better? No, it doesn't. And for anybody that it affects, that's it's a horrendous thing. But when you actually look at the significance of it and why we're shutting down countries and putting all these rules and things in effect, the, it is unfortunately it's a, an insignificant number. That's that's the thing, and that might sound harsh, and it's not meant to be. Really, what I'm looking at when I'm trying to put these points of view is what is is from the point of view of the preservation of life in general. I don't want anyone to die. I just I just think that there's two sides to, sides of the argument here, and the other side is one that I do want to address in another video um, when it comes to the impact of uh, things like. Um, the, the decline of the economy or uh, people's mental health and all these kind of things. That There's a balancing act to be had. And if we're only looking at the, the small number of people who are the outliers from the, the statistics where it's saying that, you know, if you're over 75, you're much more likely to die from this. When you go under 40, I think, you're actually less likely to die from this than the flu. Um, when you start looking at the outliers, the ones that, that didn't have any uh, underlying health conditions and weren't in that older category, the numbers are minuscule in comparison to what we're doing here. So from that perspective, the argument there is that the people who are not at risk 
should have been allowed to allow it to spread between them. Not maybe force it to spread. No, again, nobody really wants to get ill. But just let those people live their lives. Because the benefit to them is zero for lockdowns and things like that. And by making those people wear masks, so this is where you come to like secondary students and things like that at, at, at schools. Well, the, the worry there is the teachers, but are the teachers in that vulnerable condition? I don't know. Um, but, uh, but like on campuses and universities and those kind of things, should people be wearing masks? I, I would say that the argument there would be no. Um, certainly on that argument, the, the argument would be no, they shouldn't. Because then there would be a larger level of immunity or some form of immunity developing amongst those people, which is ultimately creating more protection for the others. So if you're in a situation where you're locking people down, you're locking down nursing homes and you're locking down people who have underlying conditions and, and you're putting them in a situation where they're being properly shielded from this, like properly shielded, again, that's a whole other uh, thing which I think I have touched on in the videos already, um, then we're in a situation where that window where they have to be shielded is lessened because the spread is happening elsewhere and you're creating that barrier then for those people. By slowing it down, by putting lockdowns in place, what we're really doing is slowing down the point where we get to that point and the result of it is that those people end up in isolation for a lot longer. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was in my 80s or 90s and I was in a nursing home, the part of that existence that would probably bring the most joy would be the visitors, people coming to see me. Without them, is life still something that, that you aspire to extend? I can't answer that. I've not been in that position. But I do think that, you know, like, that there there comes that point where you think, is life, life has to be worth living in order to fight for it. And, yeah, well, I, I think that's another argument that I'll, I'll, I'll leave for another day. But the, the, the argument on that side of it is, if you were going to visit someone in that situation, the visitor has to wear a mask. There shouldn't be any debate about that. That person is vulnerable. If we're going to like open them up to the idea that they can have visitors because that's quality of life thing and we're now weighing up the pros and cons of uh, quality of life versus risk of catching something that's quite deadly, um, then yes, you wear them. You, you put these safeguards in place. Um, the, the other logistics around that, again, that's probably for another time. But that is the argument there, is that in the situation where you're anywhere near someone who is at risk, you wear a mask. The rest of the time, you don't. You maybe start putting in more hygiene, you maybe put in some more distancing and those kind of things, but you don't have to lock down the economy and you don't have to, to like shut everything off. Okay, so these are, are some of the arguments. Now, they could be debated. All of that can be debated and there's a lot more to it than that. The one thing I do want to say that, that I have a very strong opinion on is when it gets to something like, say for example, we'll go back to a supermarket telling you that you have to wear a mask and then people walking in and saying, no, I don't have to wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask, blah, 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 blah. Ultimately, any business, any business that is serving the public the business gets to decide. It's not for us to decide. If when you're walking into a, a bowling alley, they tell you you have to wear bowling shoes, you have to wear bowling shoes. You, you don't get to bowl if you're not wearing bowling shoes. And I don't think that actually happens 100% anymore, but it certainly used to. Um, I'm just using that as an example though. Like if you, if you go anywhere and there are rules for that business, you have to follow the rules. So in this instance, it may, be, it may have come from the government, but 
where, where, where I get a bit woolly on that is that the idea that this is enforced upon the businesses. To a certain extent, I do feel that there, there, there could be an argument to say the business gets to decide and then it has to be clear to the public we, we are a mask wearing venue, we are a non mask wearing venue. And if we are a mask wearing venue, then people who feel that that is a necessity, that's where they're going to go. And if there's a non mask wearing venue, well, you can wear one. No, I don't think anybody's going to stop you wearing one, but that's where uh, you know other people can take that risk. My feeling is that supermarkets would all have done it anyway in that situation. They, they wouldn't want to be seen as the ones that are, are not imposing these things. So they would have done it anyway. So that being the case, now we're, we're talking about vulnerable people could potentially be in there. Um, and therefore, you wear a mask. It's, it's not for us to decide in that situation. You are entering into an agreement effectively to, to transact with this business. You're entering their premises. You wear a mask. Same as if you, if I go around to someone's house and they want me to take my shoes off when I get to the front door before I go in, I take my shoes off. I don't say, no, I'm not doing that, and just waltz in anyway. You do you, what... Th these are the rules of that business. Now, if, they, if, if a business pushes the rules and the regulations on the public and they are public-serving business and they push them too far then they'll lose business and they will go out of business. But as long as they still exist and you want to do uh, do business with them, you want to transact with them, you follow their rules. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that one's up for debate. So the people who are not following the rules in that situation and saying, I'll do what I like, and I have seen people do this in the supermarkets. I've even seen ones where they just walk in and they've got the mask on and they walk around, the, they've walked through the door and then they take it off or they stick it under their chin or something like that. You're just an idiot at that point. What, what, what are you doing? It, it's, it's achieving nothing. Now, the, the whole thing of, are, are there exemptions? Well, I've seen situations where people have just walked up and said, I don't have to, and walked in. Maybe in that situation you have to prove it because the business that you're transacting with has this policy in place. If you're going to have to go against that, you're going to have to show why. Um, and I, I think maybe there should be more done in that regard. Now, I, I would say that I'm more anti-mask than I am pro-mask when it comes to general day-to-day -day use. Um, I, I think uh, I've seen it myself. Uh, there was there's only what I mean. Usually for going to the supermarket, I, I'd be in there and out in twenty twenty five minutes at the most, um, and I, I don't really see a problem with that. At one point, I had to go and get a tire um, changed on my car, and I was in the reception area, and I, I was sort of in there waiting for a long time. I had the mask on the whole time. I think it was about an hour all in, um, and I was getting blinding headaches and. It was uh, it was very uncomfortable after sort of like the first 25, 30 minutes. So I, 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 me in that situation, if I had to wear one all day, I don't know that I could. Um, I, I just, I just generally like I think I might keel over or something. Um, so, and and there's not no medical reason why. I, I, I don't know why that happened. So um, so I, I do understand it. But at the same time, you know, if it's 15, 20 minutes in a shop, wear the mask. It, it's not that hard. Now, I, I said at the beginning of this, I, I wasn't going to be preachy. But what I'm, I'm not preaching here about mask wearing. I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't. I'm not saying that there is, uh, is a definitive answer to this. What I'm saying is, is that if, if a business decides that there should be mask wearing, you wear the mask if you want to transact with that business. Nobody's forcing you to. You can go somewhere else. Now, when it becomes law because a government has decided, that's maybe a different argument. But then you make that argument to the government. Don't make the argument with the supermarket because it's not their fault in that situation. They are just doing what the law requires them to do. Don't make it a problem for them. 
So I think I might leave it at that for now. Um, that, that's been a long time talking about one subject, really. There are all these little splinter subjects I would like to go on to. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's just been... Uh, I've liked the idea of being putting these back out there again. I hope that what this might start to do is build a little bit of a discussion, build a bit of a uh, another way of thinking about things. Um, so from anybody who's kind of like of the view that they shouldn't be wearing masks going into supermarkets, I hope you reconsider um, and, and just think, just stick it on. It's, you might not agree with it, but just for that moment, just stick one on. Um, when it comes to like arguing you know, should businesses be open? Should you need a passport to go to uh, a, a, a um, theatre or a cinema or something like that or go abroad? These are all arguments you can have, but these are arguments that, that are then sort of being put out towards the government in general. And putting out a coherent argument would be a better way of doing it. And a lot of people getting together and putting, getting, letting their voice be heard, I think is definitely a good thing and it's a way to go. But... When it comes to small things like that, when you're transacting with a business, they ask you to do something, you just have to do it. That's their business model. That's just life. And when it comes to vulnerable people, respect that. Respect the fact that you could think, well, everybody's been vaccinated now. That's fine. Well, until the whole world gets on board, and I think that may be the subject of my next video on this, is that it's all very well us saying that we'll do something in this country. But had we gone down one route, for example, the Nut Wachowski, um advocated route, had we done it, but no one else had, then it doesn't really work, does it? The, the idea that we are an island and completely isolated, I think that's been completely blown out of the water now. You know, I mean, this started in China, and now it's everywhere, including here, very badly here. Um... And then there's the argument of, well, we, we should close the borders. But we're not going to close the borders forever, even if we do close the borders, like put a hard close on the borders. So we, we are part of the world. And I think we have to, to respect that and look at it from the point of view of not what's just what's best for us, but what's best for the world overcoming this. Because ultimately that is what's best for us. So I think we'll maybe talk about that next time. But if you've got any thoughts, views on the, the whole mask wearing thing, if you think I'm full of it when it comes to, you know, like a business tells you you should wear a mask, you need to wear a mask, tell me, let me know. But let me know why. Um, and if you could try to be coherent and clear about it, I'm perfectly open to listening to other people's opinions. That's the whole point of this. Um, is to, to have that discussion, to try and see if the more people have these discussions, I think the closer we get to something that, that is a, an educated consensus rather than a gut feeling, an emotional one, or someone that is going more from a scientific point of view but ignoring people's emotions. Somewhere in the middle is where we need to be. I think that's what's best for all of us. I hope you agree. If you've listened this far, thank you very much. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now and I will see you next time and hopefully it won't be so long next time. All right, bye for now.